Hey, Joe here. Today, I'm going to be working on the cooling system of the race car. The race car is going to have this electric pump with dash 16 lines in and out to connect it to the lower half of the radiator and the block. We'll work on the top end later. We're gonna see if we can oblong these holes with this uh, carbide burr. Fast forward a couple minutes, I've resorted to a drill and a file. How many aluminum shavings can I get in my shoes? Alright, with this placed back in here, we can see that our oblong hole is doing its job there. And it looks like it'll be just fine on this side as well. That gives me a little bit of room right here for my overflow. And now I'm going to work on getting that gap right there narrowed down so that there's more room on this side of the radiator. That right there is where I'm going to anchor the base of the radiator. Alright, just going to mark that spot there. Well, I just did some damage with this thing down here. BAM! exactly what I was looking for and uh, over here we're all marked up and I even put a little uh, starting point there with uh, my center punch so my drill bit won't walk. Now this thing might be a problem. This is my riv nut tool and it needs to go down in that hole that I drilled down there uh, give me a minute guys, I managed to make that thing work, it's even in there nice and tight. I'm going to try to squeeze in this other one next. Got it. Alright, taking a look here, I got the four bolts in, this one, the one down there, and then moving on to this side, there's this one. And then the one right down there. So all four of them are installed. It wasn't easy. And I did some things I'm not very proud of. But bottom line, it's in there. I didn't mess anything up too bad. that's bolted in nicely right there. Moving the base of that radiator back gives me a little bit more room down there where that lower radiator hose is gonna go. 
between that subframe that's right there, that front subframe. So the location for the water pump is gonna be down here. It's basically gonna sit in this area right here, but it's gonna have a bracket that bolts to the pump on this side and attaches to this cross member. And it's gonna locate this just a fraction of an inch above that cross member, off of it, and off of the radiator shrouding here. So ideally, I'd like to have a bracket welded on that cross member that this pump bolts to. But I don't have a way to handle that here at my shop right now, so I'm gonna try something different. I have this piece of uh, pretty thick aluminum diamond plate stuff. Um, you know, I'm not big on the diamond plate look, but uh, I think I'm gonna use this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it and drill it so that it bolts here to these bolt holes. And I'm also gonna drill it down lower here and here and I'm gonna drill that cross member. I'm gonna bolt this plate to that cross member and bolt this plate to the pump and see if I have good luck with that. I measured out how much of this plate I need and I put this barely visible mark right here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this square to uh, put that mark all the way across this material with this more readable marker. And now I gotta figure out how to cut it. The teeth don't look bad on this thing. Try this new blade. Hmm, I guess that blade was crappy. I'll see if I can make this look like I cut it straight. That's acceptable. So it turns out these bolt holes I want to use aren't threaded. The ones on this side are, but these aren't. So I guess I'm gonna have to try to tap them. Well, look at that. These holes are already the right diameter to be tapped. They seemed a little small but they're exactly right. I'm not a huge fan of tapping stuff. You just gotta do it a little at a time. Don't try to rush it. Cut the threads a little, back it off. A little bit of uh, WD-40 or other penetrating type oil. Doesn't hurt, so I'll probably go grab some of that right now. It's about time for that. All right, those are now tapped for the screws that are gonna hold this in there. So back to uh, where I was, which was preparing to drill this out. With any luck, these uh, spots that I center punched will hold my drill bit steady where I want it. Nah. Try again. Nope, not working that good. I think I got it. All right, well, those holes lined up and uh, I got it snugged up there so I can test fit it down in here. So this will go in here something like this. And I'll just have to drill a couple holes in that diamond plate as well as in that cross member and see if I can bolt this to that. 
I've put a couple of uh, marks here where I'd like to drill this cross member. I've orientated this motor mount so that it sticks straight up because it sticks straight towards the motor and I want this plate to bolt straight towards the motor in the car. So I've uh, punched those two holes there and I've also measured them out so that I can see later that these are about an inch and three quarters, these two holes, which was kind of uh, just a chance thing. But now I know where I need to drill my holes on my plate over here. After some precision measuring, we're ready to drill these holes. Okay, so here we are. These are the bolts I'm gonna use to fasten this to this cross member. These bolts with these nuts and washers. I'm gonna tighten those down and then see if I can stick the pump in there and screw it to the plate. And there you can see, I got the four bolts, two bolting the plate to the subframe and two bolting the plate to the pump or the pump to the plate. It looks like they all uh, line up and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them down and see what the clearance looks like from the top. Looks pretty good for the bottom. I think I have success here with that pump mounted. I just have to build the two dash 12 lines and the lower radiator hose will be complete. So this is how the fittings lay out. I just need to make the hoses now. That 180 is gonna go all the way across the front cross member and up the side of the block to the block off plate that has the AN fitting welded on it. They've seen me do this, so I'm just gonna take care of it. All right guys, a quick note here. This is a summit fitting here. You see how big this surface is right here for me to put my AN wrench on? This is a vibrant fitting. See where I rounded it off twice? Because not only is that area really small, but I can't fit my wrench on there. It's wider than that. My wrench has to go up here on the swivel part. And it's actually slightly bigger than the skinny part that I'm supposed to tighten. So I can't tighten my wrench all the way on this because it has to go part way on this. So, uh, summit fittings for the win. All right, so there's the inlet side of the pump and then uh, I'm just tightening up the outlet from the uh, radiator here. So that hose is complete. Moving on to this one down here that goes from this 180. Below that hose, it's gonna turn this corner and head up to right there. All right, I put myself a mark right there, so I just gotta take this hose out of here and uh, I can put that other hose end on. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and install this hose now. So I'm gonna have to feed this through underneath. Get a nice little spot underneath this cross member for this uh, hose to route. gonna come up over it right here all right we still have some wiggle room on the orientation there and uh, this side I'm have to pull this over and then that side lines right up tighten this up just hand tight for now, I'm gonna go back around. I'm gonna remove these hoses. I'm gonna flush them. I've already blown them out with air, but I'm gonna flush them with water, reinstall them and tighten them down properly. But uh, that's the routing there, that's gonna work. That concludes the lower portion of the cooling system plumbing and water pump. I'll be moving on to the upper side soon after I get my custom swirl pot slash thermostat housing from Forced Induction Pros. And in the meantime, make sure you put cheese on it, and I'll see you next time. Put cheese on it.